Thank you so much. I second that as well. It's great to be here with you all. Some of you um, may recognize my name from previous Telelogic days. I saw some names on the registration that were familiar to me, so it's great to have you here today as we talk about defining and managing requirements with used cases. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, one of the kind of things I wanted us to think about was the fact that every time I go into an organization, I hear them say, my project is different from everybody else's project. My users are unique. Um, my problems are unique. The technology is unique. And that is really true in a lot of cases. But there are also things about projects that are similar. So even though we have different needs and different users, we all need a clear set of requirements to work from. Those of you that have been in this requirements field and industry for a long time know how important those clear requirements are. And we're still struggling a little bit with getting them. Every project needs a way to trace the user requirements to the delivered product so we can make sure that we didn't miss any features, we didn't add any extra features. And the last thing that I think is really, really important, the success of every project is measured by the results it provides to the end users. So we may think our project is a huge success, but if nobody buys the product or nobody uses it, then we have to go back and say, well, it re did we really do such a great job? How did we miss the boat on this particular project? So as we all know, especially those of you in the large mill aero type organizations, requirements are a contract. Uh, they're a contract between not only us and the customer, but they're a contract between the requirements engineers and and the development team as well. So all the way up and down that requirements tree, we're trying to make sure that we are doing what the user really wants and doing it in a way that satisfies his needs. So contracts, or I'm sorry, requirements provide features and capabilities. We might uh, include standards and regula regulations that have to be followed. We want to include how the user is going to use the product. And this is where we get into our use cases. And we also want to document what's not going to be provided by the product. Sometimes we kind of leave this out, just assume everybody knows what we're not going to do. So I would highly recommend adding this into my requirements document as well. And we haven't talked about format or structure here. We're just saying requirements are a form of a contract that we have to provide. Some say it's getting better. I do think it's getting better. I hope you do too. In 2006 and 2007, one-third of the projects were classified as failures. Um, that's better than 2004 when we said half of the projects are failures. So it is getting better, and I do believe it is. However, if you're on one of those failing projects, you probably don't feel too good about it. It doesn't seem like it's getting better to you. So. Despite many systems that claim to provide solutions, there's still a, about a third failure rate of projects. 